This presentation we've got here is from a company that is claiming to have a great solution to help remove some of this complexity, hopefully, and, um, and a solution. I think everyone likes solutions. So Lyle, Lyle Creswell, as I said, Managing Director Exchange Group is going to kick off. And he has Craig Bunker, Managing Director of Key 3 Partners, who will be taking on the, the second half of this presentation. And I'm going to pose a few questions for you throughout the, the presentation, not that we expect answers, but one of the questions I've got is, if your business is not collaborating now in any way, shape or form, are your competitors doing a better job than you? Are you becoming less competitive? This is becoming a very serious subject and it's one now that people have actually got to start doing and not have consultants talking about it all the time. So briefly, what is collaboration? The technical uh, uh, definition of collaboration is to work jointly on an activity or project. Well, that all sounds quite interesting, but rather fluffy. So what does it really mean? Let's go back to some of the evolution of how relationships between trading partners has actually come about. The typical contract base, where we all used to be, typical supplier-buyer relationship, lots and lots of suppliers. You go out to tender with lots of suppliers uh, on a regular uh, basis, and you just get um, lowest price, short-term uh, relationships, low investment on both sides. That started to evolve into more of uh, a cooperative um, scenario where people said, well, actually, if I have a few key suppliers, maybe I can build a bit of a, a better relationship with them. Maybe I can have some IT links and we can start to share a bit of information. And maybe I'll sign up a three-year contract with these guys because they're becoming more of a strategic uh, part of my business. Then getting the, into a more coordinated scenario where you've got much more strongly linked IT systems where you get things like vendor managed inventory, linked systems, strategic partnerships and so on. But the next evolution of this pie chart is collaboration where you really start to talk about partnership and partnership is one of those things that's been talked about again many, many, for many years in logistics. But I think where partnership used to be more adversarial, I think now is the time for it to become uh, more of a, of a true gain share scenario. Much more sophisticated in terms of visibility into each other's systems uh, and it starts to extend beyond logistics. This starts to uh, extend across the entire supply chain. But the key questions are, in terms of collaboration, can all partners benefit? Because if all partners don't benefit in a collaborative scenario, then in my view, it's not really collaboration. It's a pure buyer-supplier relationship. And how are the benefits going to change? The, the question at the start of the relationship is, well, how do we actually share the benefits? As that operation starts to evolve and collaboration increases and trading activity changes, customers change, volume changes, you've got to have a sensible mechanism in place to agree how those benefits are actually going to be uh, divided between the partners. And this is something that Lyle's going to talk about a little bit later in terms of some of the solutions out there. My final slide, without getting too technical on collaboration, to, to um, frame it, two types really, vertical collaboration, which is up and down the supply chain, from suppliers through to manufacturers, through to 3PLs, distributors and so on. And historically, the supply chain has been getting much, much better at actually managing uh, vertical collaboration through things like VMI and so on. And there are a number of uh, uh, case studies out there of where people have been doing this. And a lot of value has been created in doing that. Where the next... Um, level of value can really come from is from horizontal collaboration where manufacturers start working with manufacturers, retailers start working with retailers, suppliers start working with suppliers and logistics service providers start working more closely together to actually take some of the empty miles off the road. So that leads nicely into, uh, into Lyle's next section where he's going to talk about some examples of horizontal collaboration and go into the solutions. Uh, these are what I would classify typically as horizontal collaboration. So you've got um, UB, United Biscuits and Nestle working together, um, Kimberly Clark and Kellogg's working together, doing different aspects of collaborative work. And the savings are, are, are fairly impressive. When it comes to suppliers collaborating, um, I think one of the best examples of, of that is, in fact, the uh, online freight exchange. Uh, obviously, we have a fair amount of... Uh, experience and expertise in, in running those. And really, they provide a framework, they provide a marketplace for companies of all shapes and sizes uh, to work together. 
Each company is participating in its own individual way. Some will be using it to allocate loads into the marketplace. Some companies will be using it to distribute and to share visibility of their vehicle capacity. And in fact, other companies will be doing both. So just to run through the, the top level benefits as we see it, um, are fairly obvious, increased revenue, improved efficiency, um, a higher return on investment, obviously, hauliers and logistics service providers really want to run their assets for as long as they can. The other side to uh, collaboration, and especially to the on-demand collaboration, which is what we're talking about, is shortened lead times, reducing the operational cost, and also, very importantly in this day and age, the opportunity to um, really reduce carbon output uh, through collaborative working. So here's the big question. We talked about the background to it. We talked about the theory. So is it time for your business to lose weight? So we've taken the analogy here of the F plan, which uh, some of you may be familiar with, and we've come up with the C plan. There are three main ingredients to collaborative working, and I think these are very, very important. If there's one thing that uh, you can take away from today's session, these are the three things that I'd like to, to impress on you. The first of these is that you need a neutral party to facilitate and to keep the data confidential. And I think that's a very, very key point. Uh, it makes the whole process happen faster. It makes the data sharing uh, more secure. It makes the parties who are engaging in the collaborative enterprise feel more comfortable. The second point is something which um, has arisen as a bit of a science, actually, in the last year or two. And that is actually, well, you've decided to collaborate, but how are you actually going to split up the share, how you're going to calculate the gain share for each of the parties. And there are now one or two uh, carefully worked um, algorithms and uh, processes for actually establishing who gets what from the improvements in efficiency and the increases in revenue that arise from collaborative working. And the third point, never to be overlooked, is a determination to really make it happen. Uh, this has to permeate the organization. The organizations that are getting involved with the collaborative enterprise really need to make it happen. It's not something that you can do half-heartedly. So under our little C plan, I'm not sure if this ties in with the F plan, I'm not sure how long that takes, but we reckon that the C plan can be completed in a minimum or of 10 weeks. So the first stage in that is to actually define who you want to collaborate with and what you actually want to collaborate on. It might be existing trade partners who can be suppliers or customers. Maybe there are potential new partners out there. Obviously, you actually need to gather data on your own network. Um, that may or may not be available easily. We need to analyze that. There'll be areas of your business where you can get very quick wins. There will be other areas which are a little bit harder to come by. The execution is all important. Uh, obviously, this is where we as a business step in. Um, having agreed the commercial structure, uh, for the partnership, then you actually need a platform which can conduct that, where everybody can step in, collaborate, get working, get those wins visible at a really early stage. And then last but not least is the control, because everybody needs to measure what the wins were and also to quantify the benefits. So turning to the pragmatic again, or carrying on on that theme, what's out there to help you? There are software solutions, collaborative platforms such as uh, the platforms that we provide as Transport Exchange Group. As Craig's just mentioned, there are uh, solutions out there which will help facilitate supplier to supplier or buyer to supplier relationships. There are consultants out there. Uh, Craig's key three partners are very well qualified uh, to provide that. Again, I really stress the neutrality to assess the benefit sharing. There's also a competition law risk which has been well covered. Um, and that is something that uh, especially larger businesses amongst you will be aware of. And there also is a need to engage with something on a fixed price. There are organizations um, that exist which can help you get started and will give advice on the collaborative enterprise. Uh, I've mentioned the Institute of Grocery Distribution has a group for sustainable distribution. Uh, Elupeg is another group which uh, may be uh, well known to some of you in the audience as well. All of these groups have uh, a lot of case studies. They have a lot of experience in bringing parties together for the purpose of collaboration. So just before I finish, I'd like to give uh, a couple of different scenarios um, which might be applicable to you in the audience today. 
So the first slide that I wanted to show you was uh, a scenario which might be familiar to some of you, which is how to better facilitate backhaul collections uh, from your suppliers, whether you use your own account fleet or whether you use third-party contractors to do that for you. In this particular scenario, we can use our exchange to actually advertise your capacity to your suppliers. The suppliers then have much better visibility of the whole network. The second scenario, which is relevant to uh, those of you that um, are in the LSP market, um, is really taking the same scenario but reversing it. So this is where uh, a large LSP, for example, works with a lot of different subcontractors, wants to get visibility across their network or their extended network of subcontractors, hauliers, um, delivery companies, and meld those into a much more cohesive whole. Again, hopefully to pass on the benefits to their ultimate customer, who may be a manufacturer or distribution company.